Hey YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream, and today we're going to be installing a spare tire carrier. I'm going to try to make this quick because there's not a lot to it, but I do want to talk about it and show you there's other options out there. Now they make one of these carriers that kind of slides the whole thing out on a sled. I looked at that, I just didn't like, I don't know, the appearance or something. It just didn't fit well with me. Um, I did have a spare tire on the back of our 2020 Rockwood. However, we got rid of our rear bumper. We cut the rear bumper off and we put on one of these. Now I did a review on this bumper and this hitch setup. Go check that out. This thing is awesome. <laughs> but since I've already drilled the frame um, for this bumper, you hear the turkey talking, uh, they uh, also make options that bolt onto this bumper that can hold your spare tire but i didn't want to do that i i really don't like my spare tire out and about that that's something that i like kind of tucked underneath that's why the oem manufacturers almost all of them hide their tires up and underneath and on a cable to drop down when you need it that's what i'm doing in this case too so let's go look at that real quick what have you been up to i've been riding on a date Okay, depending on how wide your RV is, which this is a pretty standard size, this one will fit 52 inch to 72 inches in width, and it's called a retract a spare, and it's a spare tire, you know, spare tire carrier. It does mount underneath the RV, and it raises and lowers just with a three quarter inch wrench, uh, you know, a ratcheting wrench, a socket, a ratchet, uh, an impact, whatever you want to do. If you're using an impact, be careful though when you're tightening it up. Don't go over tight. You can break stuff. It really don't need that much. Um, but basically, this bolts underneath the frame where you drill the frame, and it adjusts in size with these two large pieces. Um, once it's mounted, let's go ahead and turn it up on side. Here's where your spare tire. Of course, this goes through the center hole, and then you tighten it as needed. Uh, these two feet here, also of course included, they mount on there to kind of stabilize the tire when it's in the up position. And here's the bolts that you need. Not a lot. Uh, you've got four short bolts with locking nuts, nylon nuts that are locking. And you got four longer bolts with nylon locking nuts. And then, voila, you have one more bolt. And this is the one that actually connects the two. Um, and, and makes it to where it stays solid there. So it's, it's not real drawn out. The process isn't drawn out. Basically what we're gonna do is go underneath and measure from the rear of the RV on the frame to a common point that matches on each side. So for example, I'll measure from the back of the frame to where I wanna drill my first hole. And then I'm going to do that to the opposite side to where I'm gonna mount this first hole the closest hole to the rear of the RV. Then at that point, I'll go ahead and, and put this up in its location, find out exactly where the hole needs to be drilled, you know, meaning in and out of the frame, and then drill the second hole. Usually what I do is I'll drill one hole and I'll put a bolt through it and a nut, and then I'll hold this up in position and give that bolt and nut just a little bit of a tightening, just not, not real tight, just snug to hold it in position. Uh, so I can get an idea where I want to drill the next hole and make sure it's centered perfectly. Um, or you could just hold it up and mark it with a pen and then lower everything and drill that way if you'd like. Um, again, pretty straightforward, but let's go ahead and get underneath the uh, RV and I'll show you what I'm doing here. And uh, again, I think this could be done in 30 minutes. Other than the drilling part, uh, the drilling is going to take the most. Um, it's probably about 30 minutes worth of work. Now I'm going to give you some food for thought. And basically it's your RV's different than mine. <laughs> That's in a nutshell. So what I'm doing here, unless you have a 2020 Rockwood 2604WS, not an SW, but a WS, and it's not a 2019, 2018, 2017, they, they could be the same. But unless you have this exact RV, this, what I'm doing here, may not work, uh, not for your situation. Now, I've already checked where all of my gas lines are, where all my wiring is, everything. So when I drill, I'm not drilling into that. That's the last thing I want to do. Uh, the other thing is where you're positioning the spare tire at. I want to position mine a little bit closer to the rear here, somewhere in the back, behind the axles. Now, I could just easily put it near the front, 
I just don't think that I need to because there's already enough weight on the tongue because we have that Pro Pride hitch out there and of course all the cargo and everything it seems to get loaded in the front not only that but you gotta figure your freshwater tank your black water tank your gray water tank they're either you know right, right in here and forward they're mostly forward um, because manufacturers don't want to make it to where if you've been out camping somewhere and your tanks are full uh, that it puts a bunch of weight on the back of the vehicle so they put them on the front and I really don't want to block those tanks in case there's a problem with anything that I have to take down. Now, in this case, I also check the slide mechanism, I, you know, the mechanics of the slide mechanism to make sure that's not going to get interfered with in any way. And it's not. It, it definitely isn't. So now you have one other decision other than what I just mentioned about placement, depending on what your trailer has. And that is, of course, where the screw is, the part that you actually lower and raise the spare tire, which side of the RV that you're going to have it mounted on. Well, I don't know about you, but if I have a blowout, well, of course, you're going to be pulling off the side of the road, but still traffic's going to be winging past you, you know? It's going to be zing, zing, zing. You can't do anything about that, but the last thing you want to do is give yourself an excuse to spend more time on that side of the road. So I'm going to put the screw on this side of the road, because if I pull off the road, most likely these tires, the passenger side, will be in a bunch of grass or in the berm or in the emergency lane far away from traffic so even though the blowout may happen on the other side i'll have limited time over there i don't have to worry about going over and lowering my spare while i'm sitting or crouching in traffic i suggest you do the same everybody asks me well what kind of tools do i need for this job well it's in the instructions but since everybody asks, i'm going to go ahead and tell you um, I have a power wrench that has a 9 16 inch deep well. I have a regular ratchet that has a 9 16 inch um, deep well with a ratchet. I have a 9 16 inch wrench, open end wrench. I have a quarter inch drill bit and I have a 3 8 drill bit. Now I'm going to tell you that I have DeWalt drill bits. They're very good. However, the other day when I was drilling for the bumper, I ended up breaking off the tip of my DeWalt. Now if I had my DeWalt, it has a built-in pilot tip and I wouldn't be drilling a quarter inch and then a 3 8 I, I don't care to do that. But in this case, I don't so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill a quarter inch and then the 3 8 like the instructions say. It does make life a little bit easier. So what I got to do is measure from the back of the RV uh, up to the point where I want to mount this and uh, locate my first hole for drilling. I'm under the RV here and I need to show you some of the things you need to take a look at. Now in our case we have a big I-beam frame, mainframe that comes down through this entire RV. The thing is with an I-beam as you can imagine it's the letter I. So you can't drill in the middle of that I because you'll just hit more metal and you can't put a bolt in. Matter of fact you can't even get it too close to the center of the I because it won't allow the bolt to go through or the nut to be tightened because it will hit that eye when you're trying to bolt into the bottom of the eye, the base. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We can see here, again, this is a big letter I. I have a lip that's underneath that's equal to the lip that's on this side and the same up top. So this is, if you look at it from the back, it looks like a big letter I. The problem is, is whenever you're trying to drill up through that eye, you can kind of see there's a radius and the wall that goes up is not going to allow you to drill necessarily where you want to. You need to drill close enough to the edge that will allow the bolt and nut to go through and be engaged fully. So what I did was measure and this eye is a half inch. So this eye base, this area here from here to the wall is one inch. So basically what I did was put the center of that dot, not the round circle that looks like an O, but the little dot 
is at a half of an inch mark from the edge. So you need to make sure that you do the same. Of course, your eye may be different. It might be separately. Everybody's eyes are different. <laughs> um, I also measured, you can see here, this is the leading edge or the rearward edge of the frame where it's going to be at. And I did it five foot from the rear of the eye all the way in the back, so five foot. And this is where I'm going to drill my quarter inch hole first, and then I'm going to drill the three ace hole. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a couple bolts in there and put that frame up and kind of hold it in place. Now, if you want to, and you feel more comfortable doing it, you can put the, you know, and drill out here. Um, like in this case, this will adjust and it will actually reach out here so I could drill and I could see the nuts and bolts clearly on this side. Um, you may want to do that. I'd rather have the tire mechanism as short as possible, as compact as possible, so it's not supporting any more weight over a greater load. Meaning that when these two pieces are together, they are as close together as possible whenever they're still mounted to the frame. I mean, it's it's insignificant, you know, whenever you're talking about basically maybe three inches longer that you would have to extend it. But it's still enough for me that I would rather do this and go ahead and put the bolts and the nuts on the back side. First thing you need to know is you can't be a girly girl. <laughs> All, no, no offense to any women out there, but uh, you got to have some tough skin. You, you can either be smart like I'm not and uh, put on a jacket and cover yourself up and all that safety gear you need all that stuff but these are hot shavings that will be falling down on you when you drill up into your frame just be aware um, it, it, it'll it'll be a little toasty and I do have this loose it's just it's just kinda hanging here I mean you can see it's nothing crazy and the reason is because I want to make sure that this is parallel to the other one uh, I'm going to remeasure it again one more time over there to make sure my measurements are exactly the same. Then I'm going to go ahead and get the drill out and drill the same way as this one. But before I do that, I'm going to take this other section and slide it onto this one and just kind of hold it up there and make sure that everything looks very parallel. And what I mean is that everything is parallel and perpendicular to each other that it's nice sharp lines so I know it's perfectly straight okay so I got the other side drilled and I went ahead and pushed the bolts down through uh, you can do it either way whichever way you feel comfortable you can put the bolts up and the nuts on top if you want but I wanted to do the bolts it makes it a little bit easier like you can see here and that they're not protruding up into this coroplast either in case I want to do something different than coroplast in the future I can accommodate a bolt head a lot easier than I can you know all this threaded bolt that would be sticking up in there if you know what I mean so now you can see the two pieces are relatively close to each other and what I need to do now that they're right across from each other you can see they go right together we're going to uh, basically mark the frame there and we're going to drill the frame the main frame they're talking about they're talking about this main structure here this bolt hole you can see it goes all the way through the other one. Um, we're going to go ahead and make it go through this one too. So we'll go ahead and drill that and put a bolt all the way through. And that will keep the two pieces together. One of the things I want to talk about though before we finish this out, use the link in the description to purchase this product if you'd like to support this channel and see more videos like this. All I have to do now is put those stabilizers on over there. However, I'm going to put another bolt in here just because of this movement. I think over a period of time that might actually work its way loose. That's personally what I think. You don't have to though. The instructions say you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm going to just to make myself feel a little better. I don't see any rhyme or reason uh, as far as which way these point. In, out, it doesn't really make a difference. I pointed them in, um, again, no real reason. <laughs> uh, so now what I've got to do is um, get a wrench or a socket and uh, I'm going to lower this, make sure that the mechanism works okay, um, put the tire on it and then raise it and uh, see if it, you know if it holds, if, if there's anything else that I may want to do to help with everything. But 
Uh, this is pretty well engineered and pretty well thought out. And I, th I think it's going to be pretty nice. Um, and the tire is hanging a little bit low, uh, I'm sure. Um, it's, you know, going to look a little strange. But you got to remember, you know, we have all this stuff back here, the stabilizers um, that are hanging probably um, in more of a perilous area than what uh, this spare tire is. Um, you know, it's more likely if I get into a weird dip or something that uh, these will hit back here um, before this will hit here. But, you know, anything can happen while you're out on the road, that's for sure. Okay, so this tire here is a uh, trailer tire. It's a 225-75 R15. Um, this is a D-rated tire. Uh, this is listed to be able to carry up to a 16 and a half inch tire. So. You know, this being a 15-inch, no problem there. Also, right now the RV is a little bit higher in the rear than it is the front um, because of a slope kind of thing that we have going on here. And you can see that this, uh, I mean, it goes plenty far enough. I just use the wrench, just a ratcheting wrench to bring it down. Um, what I'll probably do in the future is just use one of my, my drills. Uh, just do not over torque this. Don't, don't run it real hard or anything like that. Um, just be careful with it. I mean, it is a, a screw mechanism. It's just like your levelers. Of course, not the, the power levelers, but, you know, the regular levelers. Uh, you know, you could have an issue to where you break something because uh, you over-tighten it. Um, but you do want this tight. So what I'm going to do is put this hook, uh, you know, lack of a better word, um, that's here into the tire. And... Uh, I'm going to put the face of the tire, the, the roadside, out, um, you know, the outside tire. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. The part that everybody sees when you drive down the road, <laughs> let's say it that way. I'm going to put that up. Um, and the reason is, is that way, if this thing, you know, has a tendency to scratch uh, the paint off or anything, it's on the back side where most likely the paint could be, you know, it could be already scratched for that matter. Uh, let me go ahead and slacken this up a little bit more. Kind of see the cable slack, slackening up there. But you got enough slack that you can get this in. And then that's how it holds itself, just like that. It's, it's just a, a clearance thing. So let's go ahead and flip the wrench around and we will uh, crank this thing up. And then the nice thing is you don't have to have the tire directly underneath. Just get it kind of close and let the cable do the work for you. You can see the tire's going up a little bit crooked. Just reposition it. Now I'm not working this exceptionally hard. This isn't, you can kind of see here, I'll do it slow so you can get an idea. It's not difficult. The tire wants to spin, that's fine. The cable is a wound cable. So if it spins on the way up, that is fine. Again, if you want to use your cordless drill for this, I don't blame you. I just want to be able to feel it this first time to make sure that I don't have any weird tension or anything, any binding. I, I want to feel it, you know, going up and down the first time manually. You can see it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. We'll go ahead and make sure it's uh, centered for the most part which it should kind of center itself I mean it is gravity that's holding it there and that is it it's locked in there pretty good let me just give it a little bit more of a snug that's it I mean it's hanging down you can see that it's hanging down but I don't think it's going to be any lower than anything else. So let me put the stabilizers up and we can get an idea how far it looks at that point. As far as how far down it, it appears. Well, it doesn't appear to be too low. It just looks funny. I knew that it would look funny whenever I was doing this initially. Um, I think it looks all right. The thing is, is it's pretty much out of sight, out of mind, although you can still see it a little bit. Um, I, I, it's not OEM. 
but I'm glad that it's out of the way and it's being secured. As long as everything stays secure, I'm good with that. I'm going to be glad that uh, we've got a spare tire that uh, is there when we need it and it's not taking up any space in the back of the truck like the old RV was. I had that spare tire in the back of the truck forever. Hope this helped out. Again, links down below if you could use those. I appreciate it. Help more videos just like this. And as always, guys, hope to see you out there. Bye.